The first one's a great question. Um, okay, it's quite long, so I'll just read it all to you because um, this person's very, very good at explaining how they feel. I want to be loved and cherished. I think that is my addiction emotion. However, as soon as that looks likely, I get very scared and want to run away because the price to pay is always sex and sex is at best unpleasant and at worst a gross violation of my body. Actually, always that. Only mostly I suppress these feelings and just feel numb through the whole process. At, at least I used to. Now I'm relishing not being in a relationship and being able to run away and hide as soon as, look, as things start to look risky. But of course the price to pay is missing out on being loved and cherished. What is the poor treatment of myself that goes with my addiction emotions? I'm not sure. Looking unattractive as I can? Maybe, maybe not. Denying myself a close relationship seems more likely to me, but I don't know. Well, anyway, my mind counsels me, can, counsels me to stay away from close relationships. And if I follow the guidelines of going into my fear and feeling it, well, my fear of intimacy is the same thing as what I want, so it's difficult for me. I hope I've explained that correctly. I both fear and want intimacy. And there is also this awareness that my body is pretty yucky, especially breasts and sexual bits, and I'm ashamed to be uncovered. There's a place somewhere in, on the continu continuum of aloneness to intimacy where my desire turns into fear. So, to the confusion of the other person, I expect, I'm jiggling this crazy dance backwards, forwards. I have no personal memory of sexual abuse and I realise that doesn't matter. Except that if I'm to progress from numbness to anger, I don't know where to direct my anger. I'm conscious that those men who do come too close are only responding to my signals and can't possibly understand that I want intimacy without intimacy, if you see what I mean. <laughs> Alright, um, by the way, firstly, this is a very common problem, much more common than most people realise, where people are having this dance of wanting intimacy but not wanting sexual intimacy or wanting sexual intimacy without wanting intimacy. And usually there's a combination of those two things happening. So the best thing we can do is look at what's going on underneath the, at the emotional level. So <coughs> number one, and what I recommended to this lady was an email that was sent to me. Um, I asked her to write down why am I so afraid of my own body. So sexually. So obviously, firstly, one of the things that is causing her to step away from intimacy, so intimacy is a desire she has, but because it always comes at the price of sexual, a sexual relationship, which, and she finds sexual relationship quite disgusting and quite intrusive, there's this feeling that she's not allowed to have intimacy either. So as she correctly states, she starts with a desire, which is great, the desire for intimacy. But the desire leads her down this path that's looking like sexual intimacy, which she has some terrible fears about and shame about. And so, of course, that's going to turn off all desire. So the first thing is to make a list of all the things about your own body that you hate. Right? And really start confronting this in a sexual way. So uh, if you're a woman, for example, and you're afraid of your own sexual organs, my suggestion is get out a mirror, start looking at yourself, playing with yourself, fondling yourself, and start actually channel challenging how you respond sexually and why you feel so disgusted. And the way you challenge it is to actually get involved in, say, masturbation or something like that, and look at yourself as you're doing it, so don't close your eyes, but actually look at yourself as you're doing it, and then start allowing the emotions that are going to be triggered through that process to come up. So those emotions might be shame. So you allow the shame to start rising in you. Allow yourself to experience the shame. And when you experience the shame, you'll start feeling these hot, really dirty, hot type of disgusting emotions start flowing over you. 
and keep breathing and allow yourself to experience it and keep touching yourself and keep feeling it for as long as it takes to pass. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Allow yourself to continue doing this. And do this as a, like even, I would suggest, as a daily practice until the shame is actually gone from you. And I, I was just going to say that I've uh, experienced some of that sort of sexual shame and disgust with my own body. And um, I've watched a few DVDs on female orgasm and female uh, masturbation that are quite graphic. And I found that helped me as well. Yep. And, and also to look at the messages that I received about my own body, verbally and non-verbally, um, from women uh, specifically, I found that was quite powerful. A lot of the issues of shame about your own body if you're a woman will be coming from other women. Um, there are far less men ashamed of women's bodies than there are of women ashamed of their own bodies, trust me. <laughs> Most men are quite attractive if they are if they are heterosexual desires, they are quite attracted to a woman's body. But most women feel deep shame about their own bodies. And so it comes with these projections and feelings of shame that have gone down through the generations of women. And it's arrived at ourselves here in this, in this state. So firstly look at that. Why am I so afraid about my own body? Start allowing yourself to experiment with that question in a sexual manner in practice with your own body. So you don't have to involve a partner in it, just start experimenting with your own body in that way. Until you get to a point where you start feeling the shame, where you actually feel the hot feelings of shame pass through you because they are emotions that you will need to connect to and release. And allow yourself to keep doing that. And you, at the start you are going to find this very difficult. The reason why you find it very difficult is because most of the time we are so conditioned to do exactly the opposite of what causes us emotional pain. And this is what, what I'm suggesting to you is actually allow yourself to get into your own emotional pain on a sexual, in a sexual way. Now that is the total opposite to what most people want to do in a, with these kind of issues. So it's like flipping over your whole world doing that and allow yourself to start connecting to yourself sexually. The second thing I suggested was um, about the, yeah, to make a list of what anger I feel about my own body. Now, by the way, you can also replace what anger I feel about men's bodies what anger I feel about women's bodies in there, couldn't you? So, so if I'm a woman, for example, firstly, if I have a lot of sexual shame, there's also often generally anger that I feel about my own body. A lot of women feel things like, I, I don't want to be a woman because women get used, right, sexually. I don't want to be sexual because that's when men can use me. I don't want to abandon myself to my own, like, sexual experience because if I abandon myself and become vulnerable, that means I'll be vulnerable to a man. If I'm in a heterosexual, if I'm a heterosexual soul, that means I'll be vulnerable to a man. I don't want to be vulnerable to a man because then a man would be able to use me. That's actually the opposite of that in truth. The truth is the more open and vulnerable you are to your own emotions, the less somebody could use you. But we obviously have a false belief that more somebody will use it because that's our multi-generation belief. So make a list about what anger emotions you feel. A lot of women feel quite angry about having breasts or about having reproductive organs that result in having children. They feel quite angry about having to have children if they have sex. Quite angry about having to be the persons who look after the issue of contraception, for example. Quite angry that men have left them dangling when it comes to you know, looking after their children. So these are all multi-generational injuries that, that many women have. So ask yourself, what are those angry things that I feel about my body? Why do I find my body so disgusting? Let yourself connect with that emotionally again. So if you feel anger and rage, so if you're naked, touching yourself, feeling it, and then all of one of these feelings come up, you know, get out your pillow or something in your bedroom and really start punching into it and yelling and screaming and 
F you <laughs> and whatever else, connect to that anger about what you really, really feel. Experience that anger, because it will be a childhood anger that you've locked onto. Experience that and allow yourself to step under into the grief of that. <coughs> allow yourself to do that. So when I'm saying making these lists, I'm not talking about just sitting down intellectually and going, oh yeah, I've got this, oh yeah, I've got that, oh yeah, I've got this, oh yeah, isn't that interesting? <laughs> what I'm saying is, allow yourself to actually place yourself in a position where you're touching your own body and feeling it and starting to feel a sexual response. And then allow the feelings to come up. That's the list. Allow the feelings to come up and experience the feelings that are coming up. And keep doing it until those feelings no longer exist within you. Now that's going to be quite confronting, right? For most people that will be confronting. Now there's lots of books written about that subject. My suggestion is to read them. But usually when we have these emotions, we don't want to read those kind of books because we find them disgusting. So you can see how most of the time we are still trying to avoid the unpleasant emotional experience. My suggestion is stop avoiding unpleasant emotional experiences. If it's within you, feel it, whether it's unpleasant or not. Choose, remember what humility is? The desire, the passionate desire for all of your own emotion. That's what humility is. So be humble and let yourself experience it. Now, um, I said to her as well, if I can, or well, Mary might like to read some of it. As long as they haven't got names in it. I don't think no. it yeah. um, You suggest doing some work on what messages you got, particularly from your own mother and other women when you were a child, about your sexual parts. Uh, think about when you were shut down from talking about touching, hearing, looking at your own sexual organs. <coughs> what non-verbal messages and implications were received about these messages, about these matters from your mother in particular. <coughs> Look at how your mother reacted to romance and touch inside her marriage when you were little. Also look at how your father reacted to sexual discussion regarding the female or whether he even felt open enough to discuss these issues in front of his children. Uh, so you can see all the personal shame stuff, so shame about my own body, has to have come from my environment because you are not born with personal shame about your own body. Right? If you look at a lot of children, they walk around naked, and who cares? You know? They walk around touching themselves, who cares? They don't have any personal shame about it. It's only when we project that shame, then they start feeling that shame. They start feeling shut down. So all issues of personal shame about my own body had to have come from somewhere in my very young formative years. Usually it comes from our parents, and usually it's that same shame is within our parents in some way. Now, for many women, it's there, but also there's projections from men, where men uh, feel they can't raise the issue with their woman. So, so many men stop talking about sex, for example, because every time they try, maybe the woman shut them down. So there's often feelings in the, inside the male as well that start generating that you're not allowed to be sexual, you're not allowed to be open mm -hmm. about sex, and all those kind of things. So whether you're a male or female, you can do these things. So if the desire, start with the desire, if the desire is there for intimacy, go with the desire for intimacy. When the sex issue comes up and the fear kicks in, so it's just fear, the other thing <coughs> is that many of us, even with other emotions, not sexual emotions, but other emotions, many of us are still living in our fear. Do you know what I mean by living in it rather than experiencing it and releasing it? Living in it is when you live by it. Right? Experiencing it means you will go through this trembling and shaking and feelings and you will actually connect with all of these different feelings and you will really connect with them. That's now experiencing it. There's a big difference between those two states. Most of us avoid the experience of it and so in avoidance of the experience we live in it constantly. And our fear then dictates to us our lives. So the problem with sexual stuff is that your fear will continue to dictate your life and because we're afraid of the sex or we, we have issues with the sex, we will think that's a good thing. But it's actually not a good thing for us, nor is it a good thing for our connection with God because we're detuning ourselves from a large part of ourselves inside which detunes ourselves from God as well. 
And in the end, like I say, you cannot be at one with God in that state where you've detuned from yourself. So it's really important to allow yourself to start really challenging yourself on a physical level which will challenge your emotions by doing, actually doing things with your own body that you will have aversion to doing right at the beginning. And that's a really important process to actually go through. It's the process that you weren't allowed to experience when you were little. You were prevented from experiencing when you were little. And if you think about it, if you watch a child during its sexual development, a child has no issues about experimenting with its own body. A child also has no issues with experimenting without other children's body either. But we have issues with it, lots of issues with it. But a child has no issues with that. To a child, it's just a wondrous thing. So what we need to do is rediscover that by actually going through that process that we weren't allowed to do when we were children. Now that might take quite some time. And every time some fear will be released. If it's fear, if you're not shaking in fear, then you're not experiencing it. You're just living in it. Maybe, do you mind mentioning the experience last night? A little bit too close to home at the moment. We'll maybe talk about another experience later that Mary's had re very recently, last night actually, while we were staying with Brian. Um, but the issue is, like, Mary was experiencing fear to do with sexual things and just shaking and, and trying to get away from it. Her whole body was responding. Right? Let yourself do that. I've had whole periods of time in fear where I've been shaking and trembling and... My, and sometimes people around me have said that sometimes my whole body looked like it was vibrating off the ground. I was laying on the ground and just experiencing fear and just letting myself experience it. And, and I was with other people who were quite challenged by it, but I still allowed myself to experience it. So let yourself experience it. There was a time in my life where everyone around me, I was 33 years old, and everyone around me thought I had Parkinson's because I was shaking so much. So I was shaking like this all the time. Everything, everything would shake. That's how much fear was in me. It just, and, it, and then after a period of time of releasing that fear, physically releasing it, it all just disappeared. So it's a matter of allowing yourself to release this emotion. So allow the desire, but allow the fear. Allow the fear, allow the anger. Allow the anger, do it all in a physical way. With regard to sexuality, start triggering yourself sexually. You can do that. You have control of that. Nobody else has control of your body but you. You can do that. You can give yourself the time, make the time available. You can even do it on a daily basis to work through these issues. Pray to God about that issue, specifically about that issue. Every time you sit down to do it, pray to God beforehand. I want to connect with what emotions are causing me to disconnect with my body. What emotions are causing me to disconnect from my own sexuality? I want to confront those emotions. Ask God about bringing you even law of attraction events that cause you to confront those emotions. Notice the books that come into your life. Read them. Because there'll be something in them for you about that particular issue. Allow yourself to confront them. Does that make sense? 